Why would I see this? Well, I am kind of hungry. I'm, I'm got a dollar. Give me that. Give me hey, that. leave him alone. What are you guys doing? Stop it. Bullying has been around for many, many years. Bullying has a negative impact on students with abnormal, unique personalities. I chose bullying because not many people understand the harm and trauma many adolescents may endure in a difficult time. In my skit, the bystander stood up for the victim and the bully eventually stopped. 86% of children have witnessed bullying. 90% of those children feel badly when they witness bullying. Maria Cucciarella has been impacted negatively due to bullying. She grew up wanting to help adolescents going through things and helping kids connect. For a couple years, she was part of Link Crew, a program to help freshmen connect with new faces. This program honestly can help anyone, with family or school. I interviewed Maria because she has experienced it and helped kids with problems involving bullying. The question is, how did you feel in the situation that you were involved in? So, well, really bad. I was a little kid. That, I think, was my first encounter with bullying. So I was like seven or eight years old. Um, and for me, I internalized it, so I kind of shut down. Like, I stopped talking to people. I, would, I, would, I stopped having fun at home. And I do remember feeling, like, just very um, isolated. Um, when did you first become a victim of bullying? When I was eight, I was in grade school, and it was by um, a bunch of other girls. They had a little ringleader who kind of, um, based, I mean, you know, it was like calling me names and you know, um, little kid things like not letting me play with them and pushing me around in the halls and stuff like that. I interviewed Gail Grogan, a mentor to many students in the school and has been for 20 years. Gail made a huge impact on many students and is working each and every day to impact the community positively. So, what is bullying to you? Bullying to me is any time that there's a difference in power between the person who is doing the bullying and the person who is being bullied. So, for whatever reason, the person who's doing the bullying has some type of power over the other person. It might be physical size. It could be uh, just popularity, it could be intelligence, but for some reason um, there's an imbalance of power. And then also to me bullying would be when it's repeated. So a one-time event um, is something that can be addressed, but if it's ongoing then it becomes a bullying situation. Um, and in a bullying situation, the victim usually has some type of fear. So fear of being physically harmed, or fear of being humiliated, or fear of losing social position. How do you cope with students when they come to talk to you about suicide feelings? And like, what do you tell them? Like, what advice do you give them? Yeah, so a few things. So when kids come down, and, or usually it's because they're referred to us because of suicidal comments or suicidal thoughts, we want to assess them. And the assessment that we use is we want to find out does the child have a plan to harm themselves or to kill themselves? If they have a plan, do they have access to the tools to do that? And, um, and again, just like I said, their intent, is this something they're intending to do? If a child talks about suicidal thoughts and behaviors, we do contact the parent um, and let them know. And then we also want to make sure that there's a safety plan. So we might either ask the parent to transport the child to the hospital for an evaluation or we might um, transport them directly here from school. Or sometimes parents will say, I will monitor them tonight and I'm gonna make an appointment for them tomorrow. And as long as we know that the parent is monitoring them throughout the evening and has removed any access to sources, then they can go home with a parent. And then once they return to school, they're usually set up with either the therapist in the Health Star Clinic or myself or their counselors or the other two school social workers for just kind of ongoing monitoring and check-in to make sure that students stay safe. Suicide is a major effect caused by bullying. Suicide is the act of intentionally causing one's death. More than 800,000 people worldwide commit suicide each year and more than 39,000 in the U.S. Just like Gail mentioned, the assessment of suicide risk often involves an evaluation of the presence, severity, and duration of suicidal thoughts. As of 2016, Cali, Oregon, Washington, and Vermont were the only states with laws in effect that authorized physician-assisted suicide, but a number of states are still considering. There are many ways you can help someone and help understand what they're going through. 
Me personally will help bullying victims by treating everyone I see and be with most days with respect and not to hurt people in any way. I also could speak up to either the bully or an adult when witnessing someone being bullied or harassed. What we can do as a community? We should be respectful to new people around and even the older people. There is also something you can do personally. Help someone if they need it. Hang out with someone if you know someone is going through something, either at school or home. Show someone that people do care and that there are still good people out there.